The Strange Story of the Golden Comb In ancient days two samurai dwelt in Sendai of the North. They were friends and brothers in arms. Hasanuma one was named, and the other Sato. Now, it happened that a daughter was born to the house of Hasanuma, and upon the self-same day, and in the self-same hour, there was born to the house of Sato a son. The boy child they called Kanoho, and the girl they called Aiko, which means the child of love. Or ever a year had passed over their innocent heads, the children were betrothed to one another, and as a token the wife of Sato gave a golden comb to the wife of Hasanuma, saying, For the child's hair when she shall be old enough. Aiko's mother wrapped the comb in a handkerchief, and laid it away in her chest. It was of gold lacquer, very fine work, adorned with golden dragonflies. This was very well, but before long misfortune came upon Sato and his house, for, by sad mischance, he aroused the ire of his feudal lord, and he was fain to fly from Sendai by night, and his wife was with him, and the child. No man knew where they went, or had any news of them, nor of how they fared, and for long, Long years Hasanuma heard not one word of them. The child Aiko grew to be the loveliest lady in Sendai. She had longer hair than any maiden in the city, and she was the most graceful dancer ever seen. She moved as a wave of the sea, or a cloud of the sky, or the wild bamboo grass in the wind. She had a sister eleven moons younger than she, who was called Ayum, or the water iris, and she was the second loveliest lady in Sendai. Aiko was white, but Ayum was brown, quick and light, and laughing. When they went abroad in the streets of Sendai, folks said, there go the moon and the south wind. Upon an idle summer day when all the air was languid, and the cicala sang ceaselessly as he swung on the pomegranate bough, the maidens rested on the cool white mats of their lady mother's bower. Their dark locks were loose, and their slender feet were bare. They had between them an ancient chest of red lacquer, a bride box of their lady mother's, and in the chest they searched and rummaged for treasure. See, sister said Ayum, here are scarlet thongs, the very thing for my sandals, and what is this? A crystal rosary, I declare. How beautiful, Aiko said, my mother, I pray you give me this length of violet silk. It will make me very fine under sleeves to my new grey gown, and, mother, let me have the crimson for a petticoat, and surely, mother, you do not need this little bit of brocade. And what an obi cried Am as she dragged it from the chest, grass green and silver. Springing lightly up, she wound the length about her slender body. Now, behold me for the finest lady in all Sendai. Very envious she'll be the daughter of the rich Hachiman, when she sees this wonder Obi. But I shall be calm and careless, and say, looking down thus humbly, your pardon, noble lady, that I wear this foolish trifling Obi unmeet for your great presence. Mother, mother, give me the Obi. Arah, arah, little pirates, said the mother and smiled. Aiko thrust her hand to the bottom of the chest. Here is something hard, she murmured. A little casket wrapped in a silken handkerchief. How it smells of orris and ancient spices. Now what may it be? So saying, she unwound the kerchief and opened the casket. A golden comb, she said, and laid it on her knee. Give it here, child, cried the mother quickly. It is not for your eyes. But the maiden sat quite still, her eyes upon the golden comb. It was of gold lacquer. Very fine work, adorned with golden dragonflies. For a time the maiden said not a word, nor did her mother, though she was troubled, and even the light lady of the south wind seemed stricken into silence, and drew the scarlet sandal thongs through and through her fingers. Mother, what of this golden comb? said I go at last, my sweet, it is the love token between you and Kanoho, the son of Sato for you two were betrothed in your cradles. But now it is full fifteen years since Sato went from Sendai in the night, he and all his house, and left no trace behind. Is my love dead? said Aiko. 
nay, that I know not but it will never come, so, I beseech you, think no more of him, my pretty bird, there, get you your fin, and dance for me and for your sister, I go first set the golden comb in her hair, then she flung open her fan to dance, she moved like a wave of the sea, or a cloud of the sky, or the wild bamboo grass in the wind, she had not danced long before she dropped the fan, with a long cry, and she herself fell her length upon the ground, from that hour she was in a piteous way, and lay in her bed sighing, like a maid lava learn and forsaken, she could not eat nor sleep, she had no pleasure in life, the sunrise and the sound of rain at night were nothing to her any more, not her father, nor her mother, nor her sister, the lady of the south wind, were able to give her any ease, presently she turned her face to the wall, it is more than I can understand, she said, and so died. When they had prepared the poor young maid for her grave, her mother came, crying, to look at her for the last time, and she set the golden comb in the maid's hair, saying, My own dear little child, I pray that in other lives you may know happiness, therefore take your golden token with you, you will have need of it when you meet the wraith of your lover, for she believed that Kanoho was dead, but, alas, for karma that is so pitiless, one short moon had the maid been in her grave, when the brave young man, her betrothed, came to claim her at her father's house, alas and alack, Kanoho, the son of Sato, alas, my brave young man, too late you have come, your joy is turned to mourning, for your bride lies under the green grass, and her sister goes weeping in the moonlight to pour the water of the dead, thus spoke Hasanuma the samurai, Lord said the brave young man, there are three ways left, the sword, the strong girdle, and the river, these are the short roads to Yomi, farewell, but Hasanuma held the young man by the arm, nay, then, thou son of Sato, he said, but here the fourth way, which is far better, the road to Yomi is short, but it is very dark, moreover, from the confines of that country few return, therefore stay with me, Kanoho, and comfort me in my old age, for I have no sons, so Kanoho entered the household of Hasanuma the samurai and dwelt in the garden house by the gate. Now, in the third month Hasanuma and his wife and the daughter that was left them, arose early and dressed them in garments of ceremony, and presently were borne away in Kago, for to the temple they were bound, and to their ancestral tombs, where they offered prayers and incense the live long day. It was bright starlight when they returned, and cold the night was, still and frosty. Kanoho stood and waited at the garden gate. He waited for their homecoming, as was meet. He drew his cloak about him, and gave ear to the noises of the evening. He heard the sound of the blind man's whistle, and the blind man's staff upon the stones. Far off he heard a child laugh twice. Then he heard men singing in chorus, as men who sing to cheer themselves in their labor, and in the pauses of song. He heard the creak, creak of swinging kago, that the men bore upon their shoulders, and he said, They come. I go to the house of the beloved, her plum tree stands by the eaves, it is full of blossom. The dew lies in the heart of the flowers, so they are the drinking cups of the sparrows. How do you go to your love's house, even upon the wings of the night wind? Which road leads to your love's house? All the roads in the world. This was the song of the Kago men. First the Kago of Hasanuma the samurai turned in at the garden gate, then followed his lady last came Ayam of the south wind. Upon the roof of her kago there lay a blossoming bough. Rest well, lady said Kanoho, as she passed, and had no answer back. Hobeat it seemed that some light thing dropped from the kago, and fell with a little noise to the ground. He stooped and picked up a woman's comb. It was of gold lacquer, very fine work, adorned with golden dragonflies. Smooth and warm it lay in the hand of Kanoho, and he went his way to the garden house. At the hour of the rat the young samurai threw down his book of verse, laid himself upon his bed, 
and blew out his light. And the self-same moment he heard a wandering step without. And who may it be that visits the garden house by night? said Kanoho, and he wondered. About and about went the wandering feet till at length they stayed, and the door was touched with an uncertain hand. Kanoho, Kanoho, what is it? said the samurai. Open, open, I am afraid. Who are you, and why are you afraid? I am afraid of the night. I am the daughter of Hasanuma the samurai open to me for the love of the gods. Kanoho undid the latch and slid back the door of the garden house, to find a slender and drooping lady upon the threshold. He could not see her face, for she held her long sleeve, so as to hide it from him. But she swayed and trembled, and her frail shoulders shook with sobbing. Let me in, she moaned, and forthwith entered the garden house. Half smiling and much perplexed, Kanoho asked her, Are you A.M., whom they call the Lady of the South Wind? I am she. Lady, you do me much honor. The comb, she said, the golden comb. As she said this, she threw the veil from her face, and taking the robe of Kanoho in both her little hands, she looked into his eyes, as though she would draw forth his very soul. The lady was brown and quick and light. Her eyes and her lips were made for laughing, and passing strange. She looked in the guise that she wore then. The comb, she said, the golden comb. I have it here, said Kanoho, only let go my robe, and I will fetch it you. At this the lady cast herself down upon the white mats in a passion of bitter tears, and Kanoho, poor unfortunate, pressed his hands together, quite beside himself. What to do? He said, what to do? At last he raised the lady in his arms, and stroked her little hand to comfort her. Lord, she said, as simply as a child, Lord, do you love me? And he answered her in a moment, I love you more than many lives, O lady of the south wind. Lord, she said, will you come with me then? He answered her, even to the land of Yomi and took her hand. Forth they went into the night, and they took the road together. By riverside they went, and over plains of flowers. They went by rocky ways, or through the whispering pines, and when they had wandered far enough, of the green bamboos, they built them a little house to dwell in. And they were there for a year of happy days and nights. Now upon a morning of the third month Kanoho beheld men with Kago come swinging through the bamboo grove, and he said, What have they to do with us? These men and their Kago? Lord said Ayim. They come to bear us to my father's house. He cried, What is this foolishness? We will not go. Indeed, and we must go, said the lady. Go you. Then said Kanoho, As for me, I stay here where I am happy. Ah, Lord, she said, Ah, my dear, do you then love me less, who vowed to go with me? even to the land of Yomi. Then he did all that she would, and he broke a blossoming bough from a tree that grew nearby, and laid it upon the roof of her kago. Swiftly, swiftly they were born, and the kago men sang as they went, a song to make labor light. I go to the house of the beloved, her plum tree stands by the eaves, it is full of blossom. The dew lies in the heart of the flowers, so they are the drinking cups of the sparrows. How do you go to your love's house, even upon the wings of the night wind? Which road leads to your love's house? All the roads in the world. This was the song of the Kago men. About nightfall they came to the house of Hasanuma the samurai. Go you in, my dear lord said the lady of the south wind i will wait without if my father is very wroth with you only show him the golden comb and with that she took it from her hair and gave it him smooth and warm it lay in his hand then kanoho went into the house welcome welcome home kanoho son of sato cried hasanuma how has it fared with your nightly adventure nightly adventure said kanoho and blushed it is a year since your sudden departure, and we suppose that you had gone upon a quest, 
or in the expiation of some vow laid upon your soul. Alas, my good lord said Kanoho, I have sinned against you and against your house. And he told Hasanuma what he had done. When he had made an end of his tale, boy said the samurai, you jest, but your merry jest is ill-timed. Know that my child lies even as one dead. For a year she has neither risen nor spoken, nor smiled. She is visited by a heavy sickness, and none can heal her. Sir said Kanoho, your child, the lady of the south wind, waits in a kago without your garden wall. I will fetch her in presently. Forth they went together, the young man and the samurai, but they found no kago without the garden wall, no kago bearers and no lady. Only a broken bough of withered blossom lay upon the ground. Indeed, indeed, she was here but now, cried Kanoho. She gave me her comb, her golden comb. See, my lord, here it is. What comb is this, Kanoho? Where got you this comb that was set in a dead maid's hair? and buried with her beneath the green grass. Where got you the comb of Aiko, the lady of the moon, that died for love? Speak, Kanoho, son of Sato. This is a strange thing. Now whilst Kanoho stood amazed, and leaned silent and bewildered against the garden wall, a lady came lightly through the trees. She moved as a wave of the sea, or a cloud of the sky, or the wild bamboo grass in the wind. Ayim cried the samurai, how are you able to leave your bed? The young man said nothing, but fell on his knees beside the garden wall. There the lady came to him and bent, so that her hair and her garments overshadowed him, and her eyes held his. Lord, she said, I am the spirit of Aiko your love. I went with a broken heart to dwell with the shades of Yomi. The very dead took pity on my tears. I was permitted to return, and for one short year to inhabit the sweet body of my sister. And now my time is come. I go my ways to the grey country. I shall be the happiest soul in Yomi I have known you, beloved. Now, take me in your arms, for I grow very faint. With that she sank to the ground, and Kanoho put his arms about her and laid her head against his heart. His tears fell upon her forehead. Promise me, she said, that you will take to wife Am, my sister, the lady of the south wind. Ah, he cried, my lady and my love. Promise, promise, she said. Then he promised. After a little she stirred in his arms. What is it? He said. So soft her voice that it did not break the silence, but floated upon it. The comb she murmured, the golden comb. And Kanoho set it in her hair. A burden pale but breathing, Kanoho carried into the house of Hasanuma and laid upon the white mats and silken cushions. And after three hours a young maid sat up and rubbed her sleepy eyes. She was brown and quick and light and laughing. Her hair was tumbled about her rosy cheeks, unconfined by any braid or comb. She stared first at her father, and then at the young man that was in her bower. She smiled, then flushed, and put her little hands before her face. Greeting, O Lady of the South Wind said Kanoho. 